My name is David Riley and I am an athlete. I do four, four Special Olympic sports, track and field. I did do volleyball, so I guess we could say five volleyball, and then uh, flag football, and um, basketball, and softball. And uh, I've been doing Special Olympics since I was 10 years old, so that's about 20 years, I, something like that. David started Special Olympics when he was around 10 years old, and so the changes from now until he's in his 30s have been pretty drastic and really magnificent in a lot of ways. I mean, he's gone from a little 10-year-old kid running around barely knowing what he's doing uh, on the soccer pitch or playing softball or whatever it might have been at the time, and, and now he's a grown man playing uh, serious games of basketball and softball, and um, just to see his confidence level uh, increase over the years, especially in the last maybe three or four years, where he's become uh, more involved in leadership at, at uh, uh, SoCo, and just to see him really blossom in that way has been, uh, it's been really, really cool to see him do that. When you have a child with disabilities, uh, special needs, and you're wondering how is this person going to make their way in the world, and uh, as a parent, as a father, you really worry about that for any of your kids, whether they have disabilities or not. And so, someone like David, uh, even more so, I wonder well, what can you know what can be his thing? What can he do that he'll enjoy for the rest of his life that will, um, you know give him some confidence and uh, make us all proud. And it turned out to be sports and Special Olympics very early on. In the beginning, it was just building community with others and um, getting to know coaches and learning team sports and things like that. Um, and now it's leadership. He's, he's able to reach his potential in so many ways that I don't think would, the opportunities would be there without Special Olympics. Part of the um, athlete leadership program helps you, and uh, I'm a fitness captain and a fitness leader. And um, OAIC, the Athlete Input Council. Being a fitness leader is my favorite because then you can help uh, help out your teammates how to become better at your sport. It makes me feel happy because you get to make more friends through Special Olympics and people get to know you, who you are and so I'm just really, I, I really feel for people because of what happened with me with Lyme disease. David got sick with Lyme disease um, maybe four years ago, three years ago, and he was really sick for 17 months and kind of sick for two years. And there was a lot he wasn't able to do. He was physically really sick and emotionally and mentally. Just the impact on Lyme disease and the six other co-infections he had are just astounding. So I had to be uh, um, with my parents for about a year because I was very sick with with uh, six co-infections and I had to, um, and my parents were out of town and they had to, and my sister had to help me and they went through a really hard, family went through a really hard time and we got through it. And Special Olympics helped me that way because my friends encouraged me in volleyball when I couldn't try to, but I couldn't go to volleyball and I just felt like the world was falling apart. Special Olympics gave him a place to go. His coaches, his teammates welcomed him no matter how he was feeling, no matter how he was able to function. Um, he could, literally would go and cry sometimes because emotionally it was such a wreaking havoc on his whole body. And they just were there for him every time. And it kind of kept him going. It kept all of us going to have that outreach into the community. And it meant the world to us. 
He didn't miss a single season except one season of volleyball over those two years. And that, that was when he was at his very sickest. But other than that, he went to sports. That's one thing we were able to go and keep doing. When he was sick, we had, he, had, he was very limited. He, David's always worked, he volunteers. He, he volunteers at the public library when COVID's not going on and an assisted living place. He loves to give and he loves to be around people and he's very engaging that way. I think what came out of my shell a little bit from volunteering is when my friend Alan, who unfortunately now passed away a couple years ago, he um, always was excited to see me and we were excited to see each other because we got to play Wii bowling together on the Wii and we got to like hang out and walk around together and he was a very big part of my life and even his um, pastor and his caretaker said that his mom, she um, talked to them about how much of an impact I made on his life. I wanted to volunteer for the Young Athletes Program for the future and it makes me feel happy because I actually, I like that Special Olympics always reaches out to me as an athlete because they can, especially during this time, because you can't really go to work or volunteer, which is unfortunate, but you can still enjoy sports and talk to people about how you enjoy sports. Having David have a richer life because of Special Olympics and the friends he's made, David makes friends wherever he goes and his coaches are so valuable to him. So basically expanded his world.